I was put at Ivan Beckwith's section to do radio blackout attenuation for Apollo and interference heating uh, research and mitigation for Apollo. Uh, Langley at the time was a beehive of activity. I did experiments and data reduction for a blackout alleviation experiment in a third Gemini Titan shot in 65. Uh, and in that process, I went down to JSA in 64 when they had just built the headquarters building and were uh, excavating the pond which, which uh, sits in front of the headquarters building. Uh, we pretty much predicted well the radio blackout flight regimes for Apollo, even using theory on Freedens. Uh, with respect to the Apollo interference heating, especially the reaction control jets, which control it during entry, uh, and the shear pads, which are the things that uh, 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 were able to uh, uh, attach uh, the front end of the Apollo heat shield, the Apollo command module, to the rest. Uh, uh, we ran wind tunnel tests on those in the Mach 8 variable density tunnel in uh, D115, 1247 with folks from North American Rockwell, the contractor, and uh, people from JSA running night and day for weeks and months. Overall, in the Apollo years, we were inventing it, essentially in real time. We had really strong technical leadership. The nation's best worked with us. Uh, the uh, uh, things were accomplished rapidly, essentially all on log log, uh, 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 Kistler and Esser 20 inch log log duplex desitrig slide rules and Frieden mechanics. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Frieden uh, calculators. Langley's research funding, uh, a, a huge percentage of the center's budget, 50 to 60 percent in those days. This is aside from the Apollo stuff. Uh, was overseen at headquarters by Herman Kurzweig, who had developed during World War II the high-speed wind tunnels at Punamunda in Germany. Uh, and also Adolf Busemann, who in Germany in World War II had invented the swept wing, which we later used for the uh, various bombers, the B-47, B-52, and the 707. Uh, he worked here at Langley. Uh, he was picked up at, at an Operation Paperclip after the war. I used to run into him in the grocery store. Uh, the differences in, tax and cult in tasks and culture then and now are major. Uh, we were inventing rapidly using a much larger percentage of the nation's GDP uh, without competition essentially because we were the spear point of all of this. And they were and are essentially the approaches still being used. So we didn't get it too wrong. Uh, Orion is an updated Apollo. Uh, y y you know, some people call it Apollo heavy. Uh, the blood capsule entry, which Apollo uses, used, uh, is also what, what Orion's using. It's the minimum overall heat load for various reasons. We did things, flew them on the frontiers and rapidly. It's a time very different from today. Literally a well-funded, strong societal report, support, very exciting goals, never been there before time, involving the best minds in the country. As I remember our work on, Ap uh, you know, on Apollo, Langley was responsible for structural dynamics. There's a huge shaker across from 1236 which was built to shake various uh, models of uh, the various Saturn rockets. We're also responsible for aero heating writ large, for radio blackout, for water landings, the Little Joe rocket for wallops, which went up to, to test the launch escape system, radiative heating, uh, the fire shot at wallops that I mentioned. Uh, we designed and built an expansion tube tunnel, double diaphragm shock tunnel to study the not equilibrium radiation problem, uh, aerodynamics across the speed range for, for, you know, for all parts of Apollo and Gemini, uh, and also in space rendezvous. Uh, we had a uh, uh, mechanisms near the uh, ceiling over 1247 in, in, in the hangar where, where the, you know, they were doing watch up. That was the first one. John was one of 
what we have too few of nowadays. J John is a technical maverick. Uh, if you look, y you can you can Google technical mavericks, uh, and and you find out that these are the people that produce the ideas that everybody else lives off of. Okay, but there are very few of them. The uh, research on them indicates that they were fairly independent growing up. A lot of them were only children, uh, or their siblings were 10 to 12 years from their age. Uh, and these people are independent. They're hard to manage. Uh, I actually wrote the memorial for the National Academy. I'm in the National Academy of Engineering, and, and so is John. And so they have a, a memorial book for the members of the Academy after they die. And, and, and I wrote the one for John. So, so I'm very familiar with John's background and you know, all, you know, all the rest of it. Uh, John was in many technical areas. Uh, John had very strong ideas. And I'm, sh I'm sure you're familiar with the fact that, that, that uh, his, you know, his approach was adopted only after he sent uh, a note, personal note to Siemens, who was the new administrator at the, you know, at the time, saying, do you want to go to Mars or not? Okay? And if you want to go, this is the way you need to do it. And Siemens was a good enough uh, technical leader uh, knew enough to listen to him and, and then have it evaluated. So that's John Hobo. I mean, he's, he's a prince among t uh, technical innovators. Picture a room with mechanical machines about two feet long, about eight or nine inches high, uh, and, and about a foot deep. And they're brown. They have a carriage that moves back and forth. And when you punch things, so this is an early adding machine, essentially, okay. uh, although it did other things besides that. Uh, you know, obviously, these were not cheap machines. And people would sit there and punch these things. And going into the room where people were punching these things, it, it, you know, it's, it sounded like a teletype operation, okay, but, but only higher sound levels. Uh, they were people who we would hire that primarily had mathematical degrees. And, and uh, you know, we hired, uh, you know, we were fairly, uh, even back in the early 60s when I came in, I mean, you know, we were open to just about anybody, and so we hired people that had uh, the, 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 the uh, characteristics needed to, the uh, you know mathematical degree and, and so forth, and uh, many of them moved on to getting uh, you know scientific degrees, and and uh, uh, I I worked with several of them later on, wh you know when they had moved on to other jobs. Uh, there were at least three or four groups of these. One of them was in 1247, the gas lab that supported us. Uh, there were others around different places. I think there was one in the materials structure shop. Uh, and, uh, you know, they were people like anybody else. Did you have any, like, friends out of them? Or any, is, there any, like, is there any person in particular that really stood out to you among the, that group uh, of people? No, uh, uh, Barbara Holly, uh, w when I took over the branch, I, I uh, uh, ran the branch over in 1247 that essentially had had control of all of the facilities in 1247, all the hypersonic tunnels and the rest of it, and I ran that for 18 years. And 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 Barbara was nice enough to uh, uh, be our our social coordinator and and arrange for Christmas parties and that you know kind of stuff. Uh, and uh, it, it was a uh, uh, assortment of, of uh, you know, people's backgrounds and, 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 and so forth. There, there were all kinds of people in that group. Uh, and, uh, you know, they, they worked hard. What I learned from Apollo is that, and, and, and this is in the literature all over the place, that you need three things. 
You need very strong, knowledgeable, technical leadership. You need adequate resources. And you need to uh, work multiple solution spaces. The universal experience in industry is 3,000 ideas initially and six years of various triages, okay, to get one viable new product. Because it's not only the technical issues, it's the real world issues, all of the engineering abilities, all of the regulatory stuff, all of the business and financial stuff, and, and, and each of those has a 40 plus pull down menu, okay. So getting through all of that to something useful requires many, many ideas. And, and so you can't just have an idea and, and you're convinced that this is the best thing around uh, because it won't be. You know, on Apollo, we had the money to work solution spaces for problems that hadn't been solved before. I mean, we th it was almost daily you'd walk in and you know somebody would say, "We got to solve this. What is this?" Okay, and and, and so we figure this out without computers, without Google.